Well, hey guys, welcome to the Next Man Up podcast. I am your host, Mark Stanifer, and as always, I'm honored to be with you for another episode. And whether you're joining us today for the first time or you've been with us for the duration, we're grateful that you've chosen to be part of this community that is about being and raising healthy and godly men. Hey, just a quick reminder that if you want to connect with us, our email is feedback at thenextmanup.com. We're on Facebook at NMU Journey, and the website is thenextmanup.com. However you prefer to engage with us, we encourage and look forward to you doing so. And with me once again today is my partner in crime, John Gregory. John, welcome back. G4 is in the house. G4 is in the house. I'm enjoying our conversations. Thank you. I, I I know I said this the first time around. It's been a few episodes since, but I'm enjoying our conversations. I'm enjoying the conversational partner that you are. Mm. And so thank you for being a part of this community. Well, apparently I'm enjoying it too. The, the more you see my hands moving while I'm talking, that's an indicator. So there you go. Okay. All right. If my hands are crossed the whole time we're talking, something's wrong. Uh, I doubt that's going to be the case, <laughs> especially today. Go. We're going to get into the F word today. Mm. I always, I always like to say that it doesn't get the same reaction, the right? Not, not with yeah. you because you, you're kind of, uh, kind of behind the scenes here. But I've used that reference on a number of occasions. In fact, in in some of my uh, my coaching related 30 second commercials, if you will, or, or the personal brand message, I actually say the words F word and it, it, it just snaps people's attention. Like what, what, sure. what is, what is he going to say? And Where's he um, going? that's right. Right. And mm-hmm. it's, it's typically not what they think, right? Because we, we know the four letter word that comes to mind Right. Very versatile, although often often coarse. Um, mm-hmm. Very versatile word. But I'm thinking of a, a different F word, a different quote unquote bad word today. And and that's fear. Guys don't like to talk about fear, do we? Well, generally, no. If you're talking about uh, telling people what we're afraid of, oh, yeah. No, we, we got to be macho, macho, man. There you go. <laughs> it's been a few episodes, so you, you, you were due. A few. You were due. I was due. I can't, that's all I know of that song, so that's all I got. I was actually thinking of the macho, macho duck, which I think might have been a Donald Duck cartoon version of that. I have that. no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, probably should not have said that out loud, but... <laughs> Nonetheless, it ha- it has been said. This is why you do the song lyrics and <laughs> and music and and not me. There we go. Understood. So we're talking about fear today. Let, let me rescue us. Yes, please. Um, and the reason why we're talking about fear is because guys don't want to talk about fear. And we're going to get into this a, a little deeper, of course, as we go. But let me let me just test an idea. And you can you can react to this or ask mm-hmm. questions if, if you want or, or tell me I'm all wet. Okay. But I uh, today I think about fear uh, in layers. And I've admitted on the show before that I've got a long sorted affair with fear. Um and so that that shouldn't be a a new thing uh, except maybe for new listeners. So I I know a thing or two about fear because I've seen and experienced a thing or two about fear. And I've done a lot of my own work to to really to really overcome the the hold that fear has had on me. So today I'm thinking about it in in layers. And let, let me let me describe what I mean by that. Mm-hmm. I think there's a surface layer of fear that's kind of kind of a mild fear and, and one that we're aware of and, and are not too not too concerned about admitting. And, and for example, let me, let, me, let me describe what I mean. So in my life, 
I have a weird fear of heights Mm -hmm. and it's in certain situations and not in others. It's not heights in general. There's very specific occurrences, but like, I know I'm not the only one. There are lots of people who are afraid of heights. There's a lot of people who are afraid of spiders, you know, Mm -hmm. like I I think of these as kind of a, a phobia more so than this deep-seated fear. And in the right context, it, it doesn't take a whole lot of risk to say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm afraid of heights. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm aware of it and I'm willing to admit it, I guess, mm-hmm. is, is that mm-hmm. first layer. Go a little bit deeper and, and I'm aware of a, a deeper level fear, but I'm, I'm not willing to admit it. Mm. And here, here's what I mean by that. Like, th- like looking stupid or being wrong or not knowing the answer. Th- think of like being back in the classroom as a kid and not wanting to raise your hand. And mm-hmm. you're, you're aware of why you're not wanting to raise your hand, but you don't want anybody else to know why you're not raising your hand, right? So, so there's an awareness, but an unwilling to admit and, and then the third layer, and we'll come back to these and mm-hmm. spend some more time here, but the third layer is just deeper where there's a, a, a fear that's really driving actions and behavior and even beliefs that we're not even aware of, like mm-hmm. down un, underneath our awareness. And yet yeah. it's, it, it's impacting how we show up in the things that we do and the relationships that we have. That's my, that's my understanding of fear today, John. What, what would... What would you re- how would you react to to hearing that? Well, I, I think it's a good explanation, you know, f- sort of for the common man. We're not trying to be, you know, doctors. I was about to say Doctor Seuss. We're not trying to be Doctor Phil here and you know get it all right. But I I like the the differentiation of those three things and that middle one, as you were saying, you know, describing that one. Certainly, shame plays a role in that mm, uh, yeah. to some degree. But I, <laughs> for the those who are can relate to this, it's like it's like when uh, everybody knows it's time to pray, and they know somebody wants that somebody's going to be called on to pray, oh. and everybody stops making eye contact <laughs> with the person who's going to be asking for somebody to pray. Yep that that's a real fear, and that I think that to me that fits in that middle one. I don't know where that fits, but I, I just got a chuckle as I, I was hearing you describe that because I've I've been there, done that on both the ends of that, and it's a real thing. But that that third level of fear, identifying that sometimes we can on our own maybe get there, but a lot of times we need some help identifying that truly core fear that's driving. You know that really is driving what's going on. Yeah, no doubt, and, and I can I can speak to the truth of of what you just said. Even knowing that I've had a, a long experience and affair with fear, it wasn't it wasn't but until the last year or two that my understanding of that deeper what I, what I can call a core fear came to light. And it was through a, a coaching program that, that I participated in and have, have now been certified in and am doing more and more work in inside of this framework. But this, this framework, which it's not the only one, but it, it's awfully good. This framework says that we all have, we all have a core fear. And it's, mm-hmm. and it's one of nine fears, uh, similar to the Enneagram, the, the, you know, yep. how the Enneagram has yep. these core fears. Th- this, is, this is aligned, but, but slightly different. And the, the a handful of examples might be the, the fear of not belonging in, in the group mm-hmm. or the, the mm-hmm. fear of the, your performance not being good enough. Um, mine in particular uh, is fear of not being good enough or, or being a bad person not performance, but me, the person. Um, but we are all driven by one of these and Mm -hmm. not, not just one, but there, there's a, there's a core fear there that is aligned with how we're wired and and some of our experiences that, that we've had in the past. 
But what's happening behind this, the scenes is this, this insecurity about who we are and this need to try to prove it because this fear is telling us that, in my case, you're not good enough. Or, mm-hmm. or maybe in your case, if you don't do these things, you're, you're not going to belong. The, the group right. will, will kick you out. Mm-hmm. Or if you don't stay on the treadmill of performance, then you really aren't anybody and you're not valuable and you're, you're not worthy. So there are these lies that manifest then as fear and the fear, the emotion is what drives us to action to to prove against this lie that we're believing. I could go on and on and on, and, and uh-huh. this this really isn't about that program and that framework per se, but it's really amplified my understanding of fear. And, and what I realized is I wasn't even aware. As much as I understood how how fear had negatively impacted me, there was a deeper understanding that that I got to by by working through this. I, I guess all of this is triggered by your your comment that some of this we can't do on our own. We need mm-hmm. help, and and we need other resources and guides to help us figure it out. Yeah, as you were saying that uh, a particular fear that I think we probably don't easily ad- identify ourselves. But I've read quite a bit about and you hear a little more about as you dive into this kind of stuff and that's the imposter syndrome oh yeah you know and like i I don't belong in this room i don't belong in this conversation and yet i'm here and i don't want everybody to know that i really don't belong here that's right you know so that's that's i think all guys at some point deal with that i may be wrong but i think at some point we all deal with that uh, particularly if we're trying to grow. <laughs> so identify, figuring out what your fears are, which I think is uh, what we wanted to get across today is identifying them and then going from there, right? Yeah, so I would say, uh, let me let me try it this way. I think all guys experience that, whether mm-hmm. they choose to deal with it or not, is is a bigger question. And maybe sure. I'm just playing with semantics on on that word, but I think it is a universal experience for the guy who's put himself or finds himself in a situation that is a stretch or that that is creating some discomfort. But sometimes, John, we're not even aware of it. Like mm-hmm. we're, we're acting out of this imposter syndrome because um, because of the situation, but we're not even aware of how that is influencing our actions and behavior. There, there's this, there's that theme again of, of awareness. I, mm-hmm. I might've mentioned this a few episodes back. I can't remember if not, um, it, it'll be new if I have my apologies, but in the, in some of the work that I've been doing, this phrase has been making an appearance lately. And, and it's this awareness is the answer. What is the question? Because so much of growth and change and progress and development is based on the awareness of the problem or the symptom Mm -hmm. or the the issue that needs to be dealt with. And we can't deal with it if if we're not aware. Yep. So an example of this, again, I don't know if this relates, but I can just imagine that for the young dad, actually, uh, Josh, who used to co-host with you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If I recall correctly, I mean, that was a, a, a while back there and he had a young son and like they were building their family. That's right? right. That's right. Okay. So I could just imagine that a young man who either already has a child or is about to, you know, start their family, if they didn't have a good example of a father in their life, it is a extremely understandable, natural fear to be afraid of becoming a father. Yeah. But who says that out loud? Right. That's right. Why why would, (laughs) 
you know, it's coming. So, you know, just buckle up might be the approach, but imagine what's possible for you to be more healthy, to be more emotionally ready to take those challenging steps when you have somebody who understands, oh, oh, yeah, I get it. I wasn't ready for fatherhood either. But, you know, 20 years later, here I am. Yeah, I screwed up a little bit. But, you know, you can do this. I I think that's just, hopefully, I I hope that's helpful to a father who who may even be 15 years into fathering and still feel like they're an imposter in the room. But it it does not have to rule the day. I fear like that. John, what's so interesting is the antidote is often the very thing that we're afraid to do, which is admit. Mm-hmm. Admit and ask for help. So I can I'm you're taking me back to when my my first was born. Mm-hmm. And he came early, seven weeks early. And, and I, after the fact, I was able to say I was ready to be ready, but I, I needed those extra seven weeks to finish getting ready. And I, I, didn't, I didn't have them. Oh, uh-huh. But I remember being in the hospital room and feeling completely helpless. There was a whole team of people around my wife, and there was some stress with the baby at the time. And they were trying to figure out what to do. And they didn't physically push me aside, but I felt helpless in the moment and and Uh was standing aside. Like, I I don't, I don't know what to do. And I was afraid. I Uh mean, I I wouldn't have said it necessarily at the time probably, but, but I was afraid. And that was just the birth, you know, that was just the beginning of the, (laughs) of the, little did I know what was to come. I I should have been, should have been more afraid. Um, But even, even being able to say in the moment, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared because I don't know, or I've not done this before, or there's uncertainty or there's risk, or in, in my case, like I, I didn't know how how he was going to emerge mm-hmm. and if everything was going to be all right with him or or with with my wife and i mean it all ends ends well but in that moment like i was afraid i was afraid and, and I, I think what you're what you're getting at is is and can be so helpful ju- just being able to admit i'm i'm scared i don't know opens up the opportunity to receive the experiences and the the stories, the wisdom from others that, that can help us navigate and instead of having to try to figure it all out on our own mm-hmm. as we go. Mm-hmm. You're reminding me that the devotional I read this morning, um, I don't remember the name of the devotional plan, but it was somewhat hinting at this topic and the devotional writer suggested just being really really honest when you pray Mm. so as you just said that when they push you to the side in the room and if you were able to voice i'm afraid i'm scared you know what if we prayed those prayers Mm. if that's the first line of admittance of our fear was actually to god imagine the potential of what that opens up for us because if we've admitted it to God, uh, he's working on our behalf. He, we, we invite the Holy Spirit. It feels like I have a repeated message here. <laughs> we invite the Holy Spirit into our fear and allowing him to partner. You know, we partner with him to, all right, this is where we are. This is not fun. I'm a little scared. But... I, I want me as his child. I want you here with me. I'm inviting you in because I can't do this alone. I don't want to do this alone and I'm clueless. Yeah. So come on in. And by the way, why don't you just take the lead here and let's open that up. And then, you know, he'll probably lead us to the people, the actual humans around us that can help us address these fears as well. 
You know, we talk a lot about courage and strength and doing the hard thing. You made it sound relatively easy in the way that you presented it. Chances are it's because this is a a practice and a a conversational style, communication uh, style that you have with with God already. Um, Mm -hmm. But even... Even hearing you say those words, I'm sure that many of the listeners are like, man, I can't admit that Mm. because God expects me to, or I can't admit it to my brothers Mm -hmm. because they expect me to, or I can't say this out loud because I will be perceived as, right? And and, and there we are back again inside this confinement of the man box that is just it's it's like a straight jacket so if that were true now apparently i got a little fire here if if that were true let me let me suggest a scenario here if your son comes to you whatever age he is it doesn't matter if your son comes to you and says those kinds of words i'm scared i don't know what to do how do you receive him and it's very clear illustration of what Jesus said. You know, if, if, if you do for your son what is right, don't you think I would? Yeah. Don't you think God the Father would? Yeah. And I don't mean to sound chastising or, or judging here, but give yourself the freedom to be like your kid with God the Father and allow him to respond to you the way you would to your son when your son comes to you. And you want your son to come to you like that, don't you? Absolutely. You want that. And God wants that as much because he totally, he created you. He gets how you tick, you know? (laughs) So yeah. And you're right, Mark. I have practiced this quite a bit because I, I have had an absence of an earthly father. So I look at my relationship with the heavenly father as the place where I can be completely honest because it's not like he doesn't already know it anyway. Right. <laughs> My right. approach right. to it. So it's like, okay, he already gets it. Why don't I just say it out loud and it help both of us? Would you agree that once you say it out loud or once you name it, that mm-hmm. it undermines the the hold and the power that that, that fear has on us? Sure. Yeah, because it's like, hey, idiot. <laughs> no, you do not have the power of me that you think you do. There, there is a stronger power here, which leads me uh, to a verse that I, I always run to and hope people can get the power of it. That's 2 Timothy 1 7. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Now we're talking about those deep things. Mm-hmm. Yep. God's not giving you, okay, well, then the follow before I even finished the verses, well, where did that fear come from? You know, chew on that. Yep. But the rest of the verse says, he's not giving you a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. So the scared dad in the birthing room, when he admits to everybody, holy crap. Well, all those people in that room, they're like, no, 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 it's Okay. You're not the first dad that's ever walked the earth. You know, you're going to be fine. They can surround him with a sound love, that sound mind and power and love. So that's, you know, take the scenario, whatever the scenario is in your life, put that verse to use and let, and ask God to bring those people into your life who do have more power, love and sound mind than you currently have and instill that within you. And allow God to utilize them to instill his own power and love and sound mind in you. I 100% agree with you. And, and that's a that's an excellent call out and, and reference to New Testament wisdom that is it's fully applicable in our lives 2,000 years later. Let me, let me also sh- say something else, because I, I think... Because because we're talking to and about men, mm-hmm. I, I think often there's this perception that the the correct 
posture, the correct approach is to be fearless mm. and, and to actually have no fear. And, and I think there may be some people who are wired to, to literally not have fear sure. as, as something they yeah. deal with. But they run around with capes and big S's on their chest and, and they're, they're in short supply. So right. for the rest of us mere mortals, I, I think it's, it's worthy of saying that it's not a be afraid or be fearless as if those are the extremes. Mm-hmm. It, it is it is recognizing that fear is an emotion. It is something yeah. that we experience in different forms and in different seasons in different ways. But it's not letting it have control over what you think and how you act. That's the part of overcoming this thing that I, I think should be the goal. Not to not to rid your life of fear. Fear actually can have some positive benefits. Like mm-hmm. it can it can literally keep you safe at times, which sure. Sure. Can, comes in handy when you're running across the savanna being chased by a pride of lions. <laughs> right. I mean, a healthy dose of fear could make your legs go a little faster. Right. I'm being facetious. Yeah. Um, the goal isn't to be without fear. The goal is to not let fear be in control and and thereby block you up from what God has for you and, and for the, the potential that you have in your life. As you say that, the scene from the New Testament that comes to my mind is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. To say he didn't have fear there, I think you're not, you're, you would be dismissing his humanity that's right the and and anytime i think of that scene my mind immediately goes to the opening scenes in the movie the passion of christ by that um mel gibson produced yep dude and i make myself watch that every year by the way around easter time it's just a discipline that i do but that scene is a great example of leaning in to the fear. But at the end of it, it's, it, it's done. Mm-hmm. And I get it. We, we may not can, we're not Jesus. <laughs> so we, we can't address our fear in one prayer and be done uh, typically, <laughs> but he, he gives us the example of how to not let that fear totally. I mean, just think about if he walked away from that moment. Yeah. Everything's changed. So there are moments in our life that if we really are going to pursue and and get the results that God is after, I'm going to have to sit in this fear until I have victory over it. I don't have to do it by myself. If I'm trying to do it by myself, then all right, that there's the awareness. Sure. So that scene gives me all the hope in the world that fear can be overcome. There's a phrase that I've, I've heard, I heard not too long ago by Jack Canfield. At least that's the, that's the one that it's most attributed to. And it it says this, everything you want is on the other side of fear. And it may sound a little bit cliche, but it came to mind as you, as you were talking, you know, Mm -hmm. like, the, the, the potential, the freedom, the creativity, the flow, the, the ability to be fully present in the moment, whatever the moment is, all of that, and then some, is available when mm-hmm. we can acknowledge and move past whatever it is that is, is creating that fear. I would even add, it's not only what you want, it is probably what you need. Mm. So guys, I don't know how you are, I don't know how you're hearing this. It, it may create some discomfort and unease for you, or or maybe you're like, yeah, Mark, your story is very similar to mine, and uh, I'm in the process of of doing my own work. Wherever you are, Let me just challenge you to, one, recognize that you are not without fear, 
even if it is hiding beneath your awareness, you are likely not without fear. And if you can move past your fear, which by the way, you can, with with your own work and with the help of the Spirit and with perhaps some other professionals, you can. When you move past that, it opens up all kinds of doors and opportunities in, in your growth as who you are, your growth in who you are, and your ability to influence positively your kids and your spouse, the work that you do. There's just, there's so much that opens up for you. And so are you willing to do the work? Are you courageous enough to take that first step to acknowledge and to admit and then begin to move past it and not let it have its control the way it has? That's the challenge. That's the hope. That's why we talk about this F word. It's not the first time. It won't be the last time. But that's what's at at stake. The opportunity for you in your own growth and the impact that you can have on others. So there we go. John, thank you. Any any last words related to this nemesis? Well, we managed to get through this whole episode and have not talked about a song mm. that we both thought about and uh, didn't realize we both were thinking about it. If you don't know the song by Zach Williams called Fear is a Liar, the next thing you need to do is pull that song up on whatever music app you have and listen to it. Yeah, great suggestion. I'll, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. All right, let's put a bow on it. Guys, thanks for being with us once again. We appreciate you being part of the community and along for the ride. We're doing this for you. So we hope and we pray that this content will be an inspiration and an invitation for you to keep growing as a man, as a father, and raising your son to become a healthy and godly man. Same bat time, same bat channel next week, fellas. Until then, adios. To send us your comments or questions, you can email us at feedback at the nextmanup.com. The theme music is by Jacob Stanifer at Jacob Stanifer Music, and this show is part of the NRT Podcast Network.